Hi, peace. So, there comes a point in time when you realize that you, you just, you know something like, you know you have to do something. And uh, usually, like, because you want to um, succeed, and so usually it, the geniuses with this are the people who are a genius. If you ask me, it's the ones who understand micromanagement. Micromanagement. So like, um, let me ask you this. This means nothing yet, but um, what is success? And um, I would argue that a lot of that success could be a lot of different things. Some people, they might, they might like say, like um, the same thing. But they, they most likely think that success is like more of one big picture. One big picture. Like in other words, usually it's like you have all these things together and you have a lot of money. Uh, that's kind of how, and a philosophy that the person with the most money wins. The person with the most money wins, always. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think um, the soul is more valuable than money, if you ask me. Um, and may maybe the reason why these things happen is because people don't believe in the soul the way that I do. Uh, they don't believe that there's a, a non-physical like sense of self that can float around and float above you. Basically, it's the, the, the one thing left when you lose everything physical is you have like yourself and maybe some type of like we lack information on this but as we seem to lack hum information on this as humanity except for those of us that are more like prophets and stuff like that but you might have like a human physical form which is basically like uh shocker points shocker points or something like that and um but mainly prob most likely the soul is probably the one thing that can make it into uh, the afterlife, I would assume so. And there's a little bit of predictability because life is too deep. It's too deep. Day-to-day uh, -day interactions might not be deep, but al uh, not always. Um, but nature, I'll put it this way, nature is deep. You know, so anyways... Um, I had a few points. I'm trying to get, you know, figure it out. Around some people, you can't, you can't seem to <clears throat> display or, uh, find that charm or what, express what is you. You can do this easier around some people, sometimes your friends, and then other people you might feel like. I'm hoping that you would be able to like relate to this as like the person watching this, but then there's some people where you, you might not, you just, it, you feel it, you're not, whatever you say, like, it's almost, as, it's almost as if they like, n like make you feel some type of way about yourself, like, um, as in, uh, awkward or weird, like, um, that's always something that. I, I tend to notice with um, certain crowds, because I'll be fine around, it's it's like, almost like a, just to be unfiltered about it, it's almost like a, uh, uh, there's, there's like a percentage of people that fit the certain like flavor profile as me in life, pretty much, um, They, they have a similar taste as me. So it's like, um, 
It's probably like 30% of people, honestly. That like, they like spiritual talk. They like, though, if you say something like outside, so an example of this would be if you say something like outside the box or weird, they might not freeze you right there and say, that is weird. And then from now, I'm going to like, in the relationship, I'm now going to like, push myself away from that. Like that is weird and um and I'm you know why did you just do that type of shit they might relate to you and say hmm that's interesting and let's dive deeper into like what you meant by that or an, a raw fascination with what you said which is something you can't always like coach or teach it's being there with them it's the essence of like empathy or something like that kind of so if I was to say, um, just something, just something like, like not relevant to, or not relevant to like the trends or how everything is supposed to be, you know, um, you know what I mean? <laughs> you say something just kind of on the spiritual side, like, Hey, uh, I'm feeling a buzz right now within or something like that. Uh, I, I can't think of a great example, but something that would be weird and um, there would be a certain like connection to the like they they would relate to the fact that your perception is reality that's how, what I think it is one way to put it is they relate to the idea that perception is reality so because just because I didn't understand it doesn't mean like that that's how everything has to go so back to this moment here because that's not really working is it back to this moment here um, what what is you know so like people would think um yeah these these videos I I swear Someone has to tune in that just has to like, just sit there and, <laughs> you know. So, anyways, um, yeah, so, um, you feel as in like, you as bright as you can get, as high as you can get around some people, other people you feel awkward you freeze up you can't do it around them you don't they're not able to find your essence they're not able to find your soul of who you are or connect to your soul they're not able to help you become more of who you are and I would suggest the people who are able to help you become more of who you are around them that those are successful people if you feel more of yourself the more you hang around them you feel more like yourself you feel more in your own shoes, you feel more in the moment, you feel more happy, confident, whatever, around them, those would be the people you want to label as successful in your mind. Um, they're cool. And to me, cool has always been cool. So it doesn't really matter what, like, someone's cool or, like, genuine or, like, that's a spiritual person, man. Then I don't, um label them as how much money they have or what type of what type of profile they are I don't I don't really do that with anyone I don't think so I, I mean honestly I don't think I do as much um, I'll look at, despite like the money they make I still kind of want to find out if they're cool or not if that makes any sense all money aside for a second I want to know if the person is cool or not and then even deeper the concept that I have cool is not always a popularity complex it's more about just like what's chill you know what's chill I'll put it that way who's chill so let's not even say that we're cool who's chill not like who has the most friends right now it's not who's chill right now could be the most hippie could be the most hippie like out there person but they're but they relate to you on a soul level they understand that your perception is reality there's something that clicks in the interactions or 
where it doesn't like fly to this like they have a, a good human frame which is something to have as a good human frame you should kind of know like why already why you want to have that or why it's valuable but it is because when you don't have one people's well, so there's a fine line there there's a fine line between fi finding like what's what's all on you in in like in life and then occasionally you'll catch something in time where you can actually it you can just in a healthy manner you can label it as someone else's fault you can actually just take a second occasionally you want to be careful with this you want to be conscious about it but occasionally in a healthy manner you can just blame someone else it's not something you should do often it's almost like a 30 70 ratio where 70 percent of the time you feel like you have to i need to be more successful i need to be more res respectful i need to be more responsible what etc but sometimes you can just take a second and just say dude these people don't have a good human frame that's why i can't talk well with them you know um i think like no nah, i don't know I don't know. So, like, YouTube would just be a collision of frames, right? A collision of frames. It'd just be like, whoever's tuning in, uh, me right now, whatever time you're watching this in, whatever type of vibes, or whatever type of thought train you get off of me, based off when you watch this video. I'm not really sure. I have a lot of random thoughts about YouTube. Um, it's a cool thing. It's just having a positive aura or being positive is, a, is always a trigger in me to make me happier it makes me more happy so you know it's like a, it's very common there's a common view of success and I would I would suggest that a healthy view of success is not the same as what's common so like health is wealth is a random one okay um, that's that's one that sounds kind of cliche but even learning that lesson the things that are just cliche to hear that most people would be like oh yeah i do i know all about that yeah eat your veggies yeah i've heard that one before but even just saying it again just saying health as well and being someone in the reality who's talking about that health as well that might just sink into their subconscious and help them i remind them that again because a lot of people won't do that. There's levels to it. There's people that think of it like, you know, I wanna eat something healthy. This is good, but it's just a little bit bad. But I wanna eat something healthy, so I'll get like chicken breast, like lean chicken breast, and then they'll add in some type of veggie with that. And they'll have maybe like potatoes, and that would be like kinda of like one example of like a dinner they would have so they usually have like a lean protein as in a meat a meat source but they they get healthy or they get a healthy type of meat but I would suggest the biggest hustle is being at least vegetarian picking like finding a chunk of time within your week that you're vegetarian could be I would say at least three days a week you want to be vegetarian for the whole day at least three days a week four five six whatever you can do vegetarian that's what I would say that that when you eat the meat just visualize this picture my stomach like when you eat the meat there's something the process depending on the the, the amount but it, and I, I ate meat last night. Like I had a tuna and I had shrimp last night. And that was mostly pescatarian. I did also at like midnight have a, a steak, like a small steak thing. And it just so happens that yes, I'm making this video right now. I'm not like a straight edge vegetarian. I'm 
I'm vegetarian about 80% 80, 80 of the time. I have uh, every 12 days or so, I come around and just kind of have meat. Kind of toughen up my cartilage a little bit, stuff like that. Um, but what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? So yeah, yeah when you digest it, it just slows down the whole like digestion catches up and then there's like an invisible type of um understanding of this where it's like karmic where you not as much like your contribution to to like helping with the like less deaths of animals i, I said that kind of weird but it's more just with your body presently you don't have to work with like a dead energy within your body nearly as much it becomes easier to have antidepressant effects in your life when you spend time vegetarian like it's there's a certain floatiness that you feel like a certain light it's easier to activate you know um, energy centers within the body flow and stuff like that hard to explain um, the one thing is just it, the, the meats are full of amino acids full of amino acids they have a high amino acid profile that is one of the main benefits hey bunny hey bunny you're kind of cute buddy he's not gonna say hi is he well he's at least comfortable with me he still won't say hi oh oh come on <laughs> so yeah all right so, um, <clears throat> that's what I would suggest. It's not about, like, this hardcore, like, notion of just, like, I'm never eating meat again. Like, that's, if you do that, that's great. But that's another thing. It's just, like, uh, like, uh, if you're at someone's house and that's, they just offer you meat, you might be the chameleon type person to eat that meat. You don't... <clears throat> You know, you don't drink alcohol often, you, but they offer you a drink. Drink with me type of deal. Then you drink with them. And then you get back to your base complex of what you do with those core habits that are structuring the overall bigger picture as to what your life looks like. In your free time, you basically spend time doing vegetarian for the most as the base. Vegetarian limiting the alcohol. It's, each little toxic thing, I would suggest it's not about just like not doing it 100% of the time. It's about not doing, or yeah, not doing it like whatever percentage of the time. Like, so alcohol, um, just figure out like that 20% of the time that you just kind of drink. Of, of course, assuming that you already find that fun, obviously, I was hoping you would have that together. <laughs> But, so say you like these things. There's no reason to, obviously, yes. I wonder who I'm, who, uh, I'm talking to here, but um, uh, anyways, yeah, so, as I was saying. Um, um, there's a few, there's obviously it's like certain drugs that just you can't, it has like a certain level of slope, which is a lot steeper. So nicotine is randomly like that. Nicotine is like you you basically have to plan on cutting it out when you hit a certain age Basically, I mean that's that's my plan now. It's like I'm gonna slowly 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 keep just fighting the timing Inching it by about five minutes every time. So like I'm right in that right about now. I go about 35 minutes 35 minutes or so in between every time I have a cigarette and then um, Eventually I'm gonna switch to gum lower the, the dosage and then basically be off of it eventually because it's just not a sustainable it's like the slope of that one is like leads towards death and stuff like that you know so um all that kind of stuff so i know like to some of this it's more about just relating on it when i whenever i'm talking about something that seems like a b c d obviously the you know don't drink don't smoke cigarettes duh. i know I know, but I was just trying to relate on like a new 
and then get into a more complex strategy of how to break that down and like what the, the next plan is to, to, to stay more sober. Um, kind of. That's initially how the interaction goes when I meet someone who's a former addict that I meet at like a some type of like let's just say AA group um, type of deal or I know they're sober and I just I, I kind of get a concept of what they were addicted to so I can get an idea and then I might at first just kind of entertain to show them that I'm not like a lane like I'm open-minded towards these kind of things and then I'll get then then I'll get into like different things how to stay sober and all this kind of stuff but at first I'm just kind of trying to get an idea different things about them <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah anyways so, so the success would, usually would look like basically I don't think it's no longer like or ever really has been like so much about you have to like go to college and all this stuff in the minds of the people who are actually going to college like a lot of times you'll find people actually want to know the truth they just actually believe something else or whatever but they desire to actually find out the truth so in other words like if there comes a day that some some people realize like in the middle of going to college or whatever like like depending on what it is depending on what it is but let's say it's just like a normal situation they're just getting a bachelor's degree the four-year degree and they realize this the amount of money i'm putting into this had better pay off and then if they come to that realization like later on like the type of like the type of job the money is great the money is great but it's actually the soul sucking is what will get you i would assume so and so it's either going to be finding those resources and cutting out chunking out free time to beat the vampires in say an office space to beat the the vampires if it's a computer or a person or whatever so you got to get the resources the habits and everything in your free time to beat all that but are you eventually going to quit or what and that's like a crossroad you might find but that's originally cool you've been you know you go to college and all this stuff like this that's cool it's just not it's not a it, it's it's not um it's not something like pe people like back to what i was saying like people originally usually want they just want to know what's true like like they just like it tends to be a random it's because, like, okay, it can be hard for someone who who does not learn about the subconscious as much to understand what someone's, like, filling them with. Like, um, so, if, like, when teachers tell you these kind of things, like, it can be just too easy. That, that's why it's, like, obviously, yes, because of fact checkers. Um, yes, it is a good idea. It has turned into a slightly, slightly changing thing where education has become a more free kind of deal. But it's more nowadays leaning towards, slowly leaning towards specific traits or specific things to go there. If you want to study, I mean, it's the same reason, like, I don't really, like, know too much about it. It's the same kind of reason why I know more about other things that I study. So it's kind of like a clean slate where if you don't get caught up with that kind of deal and like, okay, say that you're the one paying for it, that's much different than if you have someone who's already done those kind of things and is paying for it. I most likely would have been offered something like that. I just didn't have the grades. Just didn't have the grades thing down, so it didn't really matter. It was kind of like... It was just kind of in between there. It was like, it didn't really matter. It was like, well, um, well, just, I don't, I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to anyways, so it didn't matter. But for people that, like, let's say you're someone who, ha so homework, part-time job, potential debt, and things like that. If you don't know the reason why or what you want to do yet type of deal that or that just something like that you know um, 
Uh, that's a tricky one because it's like, well, what do you, I mean, philosophy is more important than people think, like randomly, randomly for happiness. That's, that is why. What is the ultimate goal of all education in a way, in a way, it, it would be, or you would think it would be happiness or like peace or harmony or stuff like that. That's what you would think. Um, it obviously can be, I would suggest it's not always because it, there's like a certain, um, so, hmm, it's, it's tough to get people to always like listen so much because they want to see like, I would assume they want to see like certain type of results based on what they, what they want. And so there's like this slight, slight pressure of getting people to like, kind of like adopt or listen. Now, to get more specific, there's specific things that I'm, that I'm good at to analyze myself. There's to meditate right now in the video. There's specific things like what it, what would it be that I'm good at? And it's, it, it can be hard to put into words or to like tell someone else. And that's kind of part, what, part of what I was talking about in that one video is you can't just like explain as much about your plan or get into deeper into like yours because people will take it and vampire is suck it dry. It's not, not everyone, no. But I'm telling you, it's like a, it's like um, it's like a uh, three out of ten, four out of ten, three or four people who just get it, right, positive. Uh, ampl amplification, amplifying. If you bring the light, they'll match you on it, and then you two both have the light, and it turns into like an like an orb or something like that. It turns into like an aura. Something invisible going on, but, it, but the, your ideas are bright, and you can almost see it. The other six or whatever, I don't know, man. The deeper you go, the more time you spend around, you'll find they just gravitate towards negative stories, negative news, negativity in general, which will lead them towards talking about like the first thing they can find, the first label they can find on you that's like potentially negative. They'll easily uh, click, oh. Yeah, and it turns into this thing like, oh yeah, that person, yeah, and like that's who you are to them now. It's too, easy, it's too it becomes too easy. They're they're aiming, they're slightly aiming, or looking for you to become a negative label in their mind. Too easy, too easily. You would have to go above and beyond to constantly impress them. You know, like <laughs> to you'd at first have to be around them often, but you'd have to like keep trying and trying and trying to the point where you're almost like sucking them off in a way to get them to really like you. It's, it's like a, I don't know. That's, well, it's kind of an assumption because I haven't quite done that. But yeah, there's some people just, it doesn't, like, they're, they're, they're too prone to thinking negative. And I, I get it. I get it. But part of that would be not listening to what you're told always. Being the wolf in the room. Not being so gullible. That's a deep one. Not being so gullible. Listening to the right people with the right information and uh, excreting, I, don't, I forgot what that means, excreting, but getting rid of the wrong information out of your space. Or at least labeling it in your own mind as like, that is wrong, I don't, I, that's not what I, that's not what I like. But there's a certain degree of where success of you is just like, Day to day, the micro level would be like brushing your teeth, um, making your bed, having a clean room, cleaning your house, having a clean space, having clean clothes, um, having enough money to put car in your, put car, to put gas in your car. <laughs> I, I slipped up there. Um, uh, accomplishing certain day to day tasks. But if you look at it, that's something that's like, except for people with really like certain drug addictions or who are on the wrong prescriptions, most people have that stuff down. Most people have that stuff down. You could get deeper into like people with drug addictions, why they have drug addictions, let's not talk about that right now. But most people that have, are like working jobs who are not on some type of like prescription medication that has them like uh, too sedated Usually they can, 
use usually they can easily get all those things done just wake up have a cup of coffee brush your teeth shower uh, make their bed keep the room clean keep their house clean drive to work do the dishes you know like normal like all that kind of stuff <clears throat> i would suggest like that's something um i would take first off the first thing i'll say is do 10 percent less of that and replace that time with with like um different habits it's not about not doing that stuff it's just do a little bit less of it because that's a sneaky one you become like a workaholic in the weirdest way when it comes down to cleaning your space or having ocd unlabeled ocd about having a clean space where someone sets a drink there and you're the person like ooh, get the, ooh it's on the table ooh, ooh clean it and it just shows that you have ocd that's tough to work with for me because i'm one of those people it's chill i'm gonna balance it out i'm gonna get it set and I, it was this whole drama thing with like this whole situation it's not it's ridiculous but a lot of people value like success first as having things clean and i don't agree with that i don't agree with that <laughs> i don't have this random ocd that i'm gonna project on other people like gotta have your space clean or else you're a loser i don't randomly do that okay but um, that's the reason why I'm saying just do a little bit like because I've seen some crazy OCD workaholics with like doing the dishes and all these things like it's like they so literally in that space they could do like it for 20% less of the time 30% less of the time somewhere in there they could have turned it into 70% of the amount of the 70% the amount of time spent doing these things but they go for the full hundred every time and they fully overwork each little it's hard to explain but it's, they would automatically think I'm saying, don't do it at all. Don't clean at all. Just leave it all there. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying just like balance it out. Like do some and leave a few dishes there if that's what it takes to have enough time to go read the book for the next 20 minutes or whatever. Or else it turns into a sick OCD workaholism, which is entirely unlabeled with most people. Anyways, so have the clean space, but what if there's like, two shirts on the floor is it worth like getting on someone's case over no it's not just let them yeah we could get into that but that's some people's whole value system sorry explain anyways um what i would suggest is have that stuff down but find that little like like that that little just do a little bit less of that type of stuff it's hard to explain it's hard to explain just a fine sweet spot there where you have just a little bit more time to do yoga meditation and like the, the easy work little habits that'll get you to win easier through spirituality because spirituality is going to get you to win um diet is like one of the easiest hacks Veget vegetarianism it, it just i can't there's just too much science and fact checker ism to get into how it works so i'm not going to get into that right now Okay, but um, yeah, I don't want to make this too cliche of like a, you know, yeah, but um, then um, yeah, then um, let's see here. So get as isolated as you need to be. I mean, if you truly desire, you want to have someone around. But as far as the pressures of like, you've got to have friends, got to have friends or else they'll, you know, you know the type of people that are later on going to say to you, oh, I see that you don't have much people going on. Or it could be like your parents or something, you know, whoever it is, like something toxic. Like, you don't have much of this or this or this or this. We all have our own battles and our unique things like forces we're working against. It's hard to just easily, it's so easy to just jump in and call someone so it's such a low names all the time. And then it's too, it's too convenient, you know what I mean? That would be the 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 effect of what I'm talking about. People that fall into negativity way too easily. Quicksand, it's like quicksand. They watch the news, they, negative news, negative, this is what's happening, negative, and freak out mode, negativity, negativity, negativity. 
So I'm suggesting it's more about philosophy. It doesn't, in fact, with your relationships, think about right now, if you met three millionaires, you happen to be hanging around a rich area and walking by, you met three millionaires within one day. I'll say two of them are cool, but one of them is the one that, that offers you to hang out or something. Let's say this person's like negative though in all reality, but would you hang out with them for their money? Would you? Like, but they're like a negative talker or they're, they're just, you know, but by, by the amount of time is with the amount of time you spent with them, you realize at some point it hits you this person's like chronically negative and they're a millionaire, the label of success in our society. So is like, is it worth it to hang out with them and potentially have them like cling on to me for my personality, you know, having less money than them or whatever situation, or am I going to pursue them to see if I can, you know, to get around success? Like they probably have like a high esteem job and all this kind of stuff. So I would actually be the type of person to actually not hang out with them. The reason I wouldn't take money is because I don't want to owe them anything weird back. So I wouldn't take much money, really any money from them. That's that's a weird one, but I wouldn't. I would not try to have a sugar daddy or type of deal. Or some weird put me on, but they had to sell my soul type of deal. And that could be the micro level. That could be something weird that you, you know, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Okay, I want, so I would actually take someone with less money that's more positive if I had the choice. It's not just about money to me. And, you know, everyone can say that. But to some people, it's genuinely a lot more about money. It's just about money. To some people. It is. It really is. There's some people who need to work on it. It's too much about money. They, the way they value look at other people is too convenient. So, like, their mind is too convenient for them to look at someone has a lot less money it's too easy for them to say this or that when and the reason why they're triggered to say that is because this person has more spirituality than them they have more wealth and of the soul than them they've been soul sucked too much in their venture of making their capital that they actually have gotten to the point where they're chronically somewhat a percentage of the time they're chronically negative for no reason and so then you have like someone who's like a minimalist or something like that in the midst of all this going on, like a minimalist. No flashy items whatsoever, except for maybe like jewelry, because jewelry is something that people who are minimalists might be into, I don't know. But I don't know why I said that, but um, I don't know why I said that, but um, yeah. So this is getting a little bit long, I'm just gonna make a part two to this, okay? Peace. This is just, the label this is just like a, a self-help flow, just a talk. From everything so pretty much like the other day I was able to conquer in the in my the middle of my reality I was able to break the plateau of strength within my mind of, of the working out I finally started working out finally I hit a chest day and I did about nine sets and the next day I hit squats and I did about eight or nine sets and then I did some other uh, type of toning movements and, and I just well I had I basically had to do yoga before I did the squats because I knew I was too tight I knew I was too tight tight is in cool like I was just too tight man like I'm tight like I'm cool I'm sorry that's random that's don't, ask, don't ask don't ask homie <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> but um no nah, I was too like tight in my in my back and stuff like that so I had to I did a 15 minute yoga session Kino, and then, um, and then um, went downstairs and did about nine sets of squats. Um, I just I don't have the whole squat rack. I just bought one big dumbbell and I just do sumo squats. Like I get the dumbbell, looks like I'm holding a wine glass with two hands, and I just you know, and I, I have the muscle memory down where I know how to get those curves with less reps. It's easier. But my job is to eat the carbs. Enough protein, but an emphasis on the carbs with little fat, if that makes any sense. So that's been my first week in a long time, but I'm now getting back into weight training, and that's how I'm gonna score certain, th certain things. 
is through weight training, if I'm able to keep doing it. But this time I'm confident. I'm very confident. I will say before, the times were like, I look at the next week ahead of me, I wasn't confident that I was gonna be able to lift weights. Now I am confident that I'm going to because I already, I just saw it, I just did it. That, with, with the medication I'm on, sometimes that was tricky. I've been praying for something new and just now it's just kind of, I've been able to kind of fight it with certain things to the point now where I'm just gonna keep on. It took like the endorphins from the first few days of lifting to have the motivation to do it the next time. That was kind of why it was tricky. Um, I knew it would happen at some point once I quit the alcohol and the kratom and stuff like that. I knew this would happen. At some point, I just had, I, did, I was trying to hit the hammer right on the nail. Get it, I was trying to hit the spot there with my own, that's, that's not a good uh, wording there, but so yeah, I'm gonna make a little part two to this, okay? Um, this is just a little flow of like what I'm, just a talk, all right? Just, just a talk. That might be the title, I don't know.